In this microsode, I will demonstrate how to make a drop shadow filter effect in Inkscape version 0.46. There are many ways to make drop shadows in Inkscape, but I want to focus on using the filter effect method. I must warn you though that this microsode will have a bit of a shelf life since a drop shadow filter effect will be included in the next version of Inkscape, version 0.47, so it won't be necessary, necessary to uh, manually set up this filter in uh, Inkscape in the future. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my text tool and I'm going to type out some text here. And I'll change its font. And we'll use a Georgia bold italic. Okay. I give us a nice thick font here. Okay. And I'll change its color to something a little lighter. We'll go with orange so we can see the drop shadow behind it. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is go to Object, Filter Effects. And when you go there for the first time, there won't be any filters set up. So we're going to go New, and I'm going to click on this default file name, and I'll just call this Drop Shadow. We'll call it Drop Shad 1. Okay, we'll abbreviate there. And we need to add some effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a blur effect. We'll add that. We're going to find an offset. We'll add that. A color matrix. We'll add that one. And finally we'll find a composite. And we'll add that effect. Okay, now we have to set up the effects to work correctly. So the first thing that we're going to do is change our guy our uh, Gaussian blur, blah, 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 get mixed up there, from source graphic to uh, source alpha. So we do that by selecting, left clicking this arrow and dropping it off on source alpha. Um, the next thing that we're going to do uh, to complete this is we're going to go down to our composite uh, filter and we're going to select the first arrow and we're going to move it to our source graphic. Okay, that pretty much sets it up. Okay, while we're in composite, I'm going to change this operator to default. Okay, we'll go into our blur setting, and I'm going to make this blur setting zero for now. We'll go to the offset setting, and I'm going to make this a six for the X, six for the Y, and for the color matrix, we'll leave everything alone. Okay, so let me move this aside here. I'll highlight the object that we want to add a drop shadow to, and we'll check it. Okay, let's take a look at it. There we have a drop shadow. Let me zoom in on it here so we can see it. Okay, now, what we can do, since this is text, I can type in something else and the drop shadow will be applied. So however you change this object, as long as the drop shadow filter is applied to it, um, you'll get a drop shadow. Okay. Now this is what I call a hard drop shadow, meaning that there's no uh, transparency uh, on the drop shadow. So many of you want to know, hey, how do I add a little bit of transparency, a little, little bit of blur to it so it's not such a hard uh, drop shadow? Well, let's duplicate this. And I'll move this down. And we'll go back to Object, Filter Effects. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this and do a duplicate. Okay? I'll highlight this effect down here and uncheck it. Okay, for this new one, We're going to overwrite this and call it 2. Okay, so now we have, I want to uncheck everything. Now we have two versions that we're going to set up one with a uh, hard drop shadow and one with a soft drop shadow. Okay, now for the drop shadow 2, we're going to change its blur setting to about a 2. Offset, we'll leave alone. Color matrix, we have to change. Now when you set up uh, a color matrix, uh, the default is we have a 1 here, 
one here, one in this column, and one in this column. This very last column is what I consider the alpha channel column, and the one here represents a 100% opacity. So if we want to change that to something like 70%, for example, we need to double click this figure and put a 0.7 there. I know it's a little hard to see. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on that. There you go. So we have 1, 1, 1, and 0.7. Okay, I'll zoom back out. And a 0.7 is equivalent to 70% opacity. So that'll give us a little bit of transparency there. Okay, we'll select our text and we'll apply our drop shadow. And now you can see that we have a soft drop shadow. So let me zoom in on this a little tighter so we can see. And that is what I find is a little bit more appealing. Okay, if I move that up a little bit, you can see how the drop shadow is transparent. Okay, and that's basically how you make drop shadows with a filter effect in Inkscape. Thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.